Our upcoming DevOps speaker works as a senior systems analyst at Tesco with seven plus years of experience in building solutions to enhance business productivity. Experienced in all aspects of software development, designing, implementing, testing, and delivering back-end APIs and front-end apps, he is a specialist in building middleware solutions, optimizing infrastructure and databases, and analyzing data. Please welcome Shashank Rajdeep. And he'll be joined in this session by his colleague who works as a software development manager at Tesco, having deep knowledge in building large enterprise applications, setting up teams for greenfield projects, and transforming legacy applications to modern technologies. That's Srinivasa Chakka for you. And in a few minutes from now, Shashank and Srinivas are going to light up our screens with a talk on the case study of transformation from zero to 100% continuous integration, explaining the change from having a long painful process of releasing software to embracing 100% continuous integration. With that, let's turn on the spotlight to a dynamic duo, Mr. Shashang Rajdeep and Mr. Srinivasa Chakka. Over to you. My name is Srinivas Chakka. I'm going to walk you through our journey of zero to hundred percent continuous integration. This journey includes what we have done and why we have done, what is the process involved in doing this, how we are able to brainstorm and come with solutions, and then continue the journey focus and how we have reached our end objective and what are the learnings. And I, with this, I will hand over the control to my colleague, Shashank, to give you more insights into our journey. Thank you, Shri. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shashank Razdeep. I am a senior systems analyst at Tesco. I'm, I'm going to share you our experience with uh, our journey where we started with uh, in the DevOps journey from zero to 100%. We have achieved 100% continuous integration within our all of the repos that we currently have. So if I talk about our journey, uh, we started uh, with observing polyglot of technologies we work with. So we have legacy systems, which are written in uh, DB2 and then mainframe systems. We have we have best stock systems, the middleware solutions that we use for interacting with third party apps and third party companies. We have some new technologies that are evolving day to day. So if I talk about five, six years back until now, we have been uh, developing applications, web services, both REST and SOAP APIs. And then we have Android applications, which we host on the Android devices for our SOAP colleagues. And we have been using a bunch of technologies that you can see on the screen uh, right now. and. It's not that uh, it's been uh, developed in a year or so. It's been a journey of multiple couple of years. And that's how we have arrived where we are right now. So it started uh, all of it uh, back in 2015, 16, where we started with uh, some legacy applications. And then we started rewriting all of those applications. And we, we, we had a vision of using the latest technologies. So we started translating all of those legacy systems, the Windows applications, the web applications, the SOAP APIs, uh, the web services, all of that, a, a rewrite of all of that journey started. And we kept on moving. We kept on evolving with those technologies. And we ended up having a, a huge repo base where we are right now. So if you see the screen, the data and the numbers show in itself that we have a huge repo base. We have more than 40 APIs, which are both local and, and global. We use these APIs across tenants, across regions, across countries. 
we have applications that are shared across countries and we support multiple countries with those applications we support approximately 20 android applications with our team with uh, the development and and uh, the support that we have so uh, if you see uh, we have been using a large technology and and then uh, on that has resulted in a large repo base so uh, we had a, a vision that we want to have uh, best of the best and then uh, we ended up having uh, too many repos and then we started refining them but then in that journey we also experienced that this became a bottleneck for us we had development cycle and deployment cycle uh, which was not going hand in hand so uh, we started having feedbacks we started having feedbacks from our stakeholders from our end user customers we we had feedbacks from our colleagues who work with us software developers uh, the testers the support engineers and and we had feedbacks coming from all over that yes we are not in the right shape where we should be so we uh, with the feedback that we we were continuously getting we started analyzing what was not right and then that's where we realized that okay to have a right sync between the development and the the delivery that we are having to the end users we need to have a sync up so that's where we had thorough discussion some brainstorming sessions and all of that coming into some uh, real discussions happened across why we are here how we can get over from there and then what all things we need to do uh, again uh, we we didn't want it to end up again a, at a place where uh, we were right now so we we had some real technical discussions some some discussions with the with the stakeholders in terms of what could be the best solutions what could be a, a solution that is cost optimized and then when it came to the technology the technology that we should use the platform that we should utilize what is the best available in market and then uh, the technology that we use what all things it it provides us what are the pros and cons of it uh, there were there were multiple solutions available uh, be it the jenkins be it uh, the git actions be it the azure devops and then uh, when you talk about multiple technology multiple platforms you need to just think through have a, a better planning when it comes to having a bigger vision and and a, a better implementation so all of that keeping that all of that into mind into considerations uh, we started our journey we had some brainstorming sessions with the developers where we had discussions around the code quality that we are uh, building the solutions with uh, the security uh, that we consider how fast we need to build our code uh, how fast we need to uh, do the deployment in a day how many uh, builds would be coming up how do you manage your agents where do you host your agents and these all things that were considered before we actually started the implementation so it's always necessary it's always important that you do a better planning you you might start slow but then uh, if you have a better planning if you have uh, the right considerations of what your pain points are uh, you will always be able to uh, achieve in the long run so that's how we we started uh, i i would hand over to shrini to talk some more about it and then probably i'll uh, come back sure i think that brainstorming and the deep dive if i may call has taken you know multiple sittings with multiple stakeholders so if i look at the expectations from the management you know they want to make sure it's not going to the cost and it is manageable for the team Uh, it is fast and it is self sustainable initiative because it's not that you know we have not tried you know implementing ci earlier 
but it's just that you know the strategy was not right and it it was adding additional people in there and it's not going along with the development what we were doing uh, so considering all of that the principles which were set by management the first starting point for us and then looking at the priority because you can include number of things in your you know continuous integration pipe but then you need to pick the right steps and you know right checks what you want to do so for us the priority is the code quality so we need to run the code quality checks and give the feedback to the developers right then and there ensure that builds are automated and you know they're not built from local so that you know uh, you don't find issues later with your builds or the version of the software or so the plugins what you include there the core coverage and the path coverage again uh, is also important you know the amount of focus you're going to give to the quality of the code and the test what you write the security is mandatory nowadays because you know with the things going around uh, if you build code and build the systems which are not secure enough you know you just cannot put anything into production now the solution is in part right uh, so we explored different technologies the ones which we have used earlier the ones which are new and then the ones which you know will reduce the overhead of maintaining it but still gives you the speed at which you are doing the development and then you know it is sustainable in the long run so we have decided to create the templates you know covering each of technology streams we are working with so that you know you able to create a repeatable solution for a certain technologies and then we have decided to go with certain technologies which are self hosted and which reduce the overhead of maintaining your orchestrators and all and uh, the ones which will give you you know the firepower you need to be able to run your builds in parallel without wasting developers time and then it should be end of day easy for the developers to run and operate most of the times because you cannot have a fire brigade of you know experts sitting there resolving issues day in day out so it should be easy for the developers to you know maybe learn and operate it and you bring in the experts as and when necessary so with that we concluded our deep dive discussions you know multiple sittings zeroed in on the technologies you know uh, got in few experts to kick start our initiative and you know and with the trained in house experts moving on from there we have created a road map again the whole point is you know making the release you know quality improve uh, automated improve the quality of the releases and all so ci is just you know one step in there but then our vision is to ensure that you know ci is completed and then we have continuous delivery and then continuous deployment overcoming all the challenges we have so with the ci we identified the problem areas discussed and finalized the reports which require ci i mean uh, though we require all the reports to be under continuous integration it's just humongous effort to try and address all of them you know in a short span of time so we had to prioritize to look at you know what is that you want to handle first and how do you want to handle first so we looked at our pipelines you know release pipeline saying the work which you going to be performing on the backlog depending on that you prioritize your repos also look at you know the naughty ones which are based on the historical you know work what you have done where you have more issues which requires definitely improving quality so those were prioritized to the top while others are put in you know uh, the lower in the priority to start the work so we have finalized the task which need to be there in each of the template create the templates for each build type implemented the templates to each repo automate complete validate the builds and release artifacts so once we identified the steps we want to do based on the discussions uh, we have uh, identified the templates which we need to create and then started some proof of concept work to implement those templates because effort will be huge because you're doing it first time and you're learning and you're implementing the feedback but in the long run that is to help you you know do things in a more efficient way so continuous integration in hand so we will probably look at you know continuous delivery the delivery mechanism identify the target environments deploy manually using artifacts generated and continuous deployment which is our uh, final target where we want to go there uh, you know all end to end is automated from the time you do check in your code and then the journey into the depth of technology and the template i would probably you know ask my colleague shashank you know uh, to give a lowdown on this one
Yeah, so as Srini spoke about the templates, uh, so we had, um, since we had a huge repo base, uh, we identified the technologies which uh, fitted into multiple groups. So if you have groups of .NET applications, they fit into one group. If you have Java-based applications, Spring Boot, and, and Maven builds that come into pictures, so those all were grouped into one builds. You have Android applications so that fit into another group. You have a slight of a variation with uh, the technology they, they they get into a different group so when you uh, when we grouped into multiple the technologies and the services uh, the apis into different groups we started targeting one group at a time and then when we uh, started our journey we had to uh, do the implementation first we had the standards in mind uh, in terms of the uh, the ci that we wanted to implement so there are some prescribed standards where you have to build your solutions, you have to uh, test it, you have to generate the standards to it that we had in our mind and then huge repo base with multiple groups where we want to implement our solution to. So our, our whole idea was to templatize uh, all of these repos so that the implementation and the application would be simpler, but then at the same time, it would help the implementation at a scale. So if you have to say 100 uh, repos to be applied with a .NET template, so it would be really easy to have one template and then you start applying that template without any change. So you have certain set of tasks, the jobs and the stages already defined within the temp template that helps you execute the pipeline, get your artifacts, get your builds in the right shape uh, have all the tests that are required, the code coverage that you are looking at, the security that you are looking at. So all of that is already considered when you when we wrote that template for each technology type. So if I talk about the .NET framework APIs, we had the .NET build type being used, and then we had Sonar Cube, we have Cobertura for code coverage, uh, we used any unit tests, uh, and then uh, Nexus for storing all the artifacts. Similarly, we had for uh, Java Spring Boot APIs where we have the Maven builds. We had Android applications where we use the Gradle builds and then .NET Core APIs where we use the MS builds for generating the builds. Then we had a slight of a variation in terms of wherever and however the application has been written in terms of uh, utilizing the code coverage and where do you want to store the artifact because once you you have a strategy of where you are storing the artifact you can do the integration with your cd so all of that was considered and then uh, that's how we arrived uh, at this solution of templatizing and then we started implementing that at a scale so where you have to do some uh, configurations in certain of the temp technology using certain of the technologies for building your CI uh, when you start having a piece of code that is being integrated with your solution it, it starts reflecting at scale and at a pace so that's how that's what our vision was that we have a template we we have the standards and then the implementation should be really easy and we should be able to do it at a scale so we were able to implement and, and apply these templates to hundreds of repos across multiple technologies to achieve a 100% CI, what we have achieved right now. If, if you see with the implementation, it, it always comes down to if you have implemented, you have implemented in the right shape and if you have trying to improve or not because it's always important that uh, you keep improving things to uh, get 100% out of it. So uh, in the first step, you might not have got the right thing, what you might have required, but then if you have very close feedback with the developers, with the support engineers, with the customers, and, and you keep improving with those feedbacks. So uh, those feedbacks, they come in form of data that we have used. And this data that is all available within uh, the Azure portal and, and some of them we have extracted out of other technology platforms as well. So we have used the technology, uh, we have used the data, we have used the analytics over it and then we kept on refining these templates to set standard of it 
that uh, okay this is the final one where we want to get to and we have uh, certain jobs we have certain stages that we need to monitor we have used the uh, analytics data for the food coverage uh, if your pipelines are running fine or not if they are failing why they are failing overall uh, right from the check in until the artifact is generated it's all right now automated and then all of that is monitored very closely you have alerts wherever you have things failing certain things not working so all of that is closely monitored and then we keep we kept on optimizing the the, the solution that we had built to achieve our targets to talk about the tracking and execution maybe uh, shri can uh, put some light on it sure shashank so i think when you pick up a task of you know such a humongous size you need to have a right tracking and execution so what we started off with is you know year 2021 q4 uh, about december january time and understanding the problem space data collection exercise planning it took us the whole quarter but then once we started off from there year 21 22 that starts about march when you know we got into the coding these templates and testing those template proof of concepts and all so it almost took in a quarter to do the proof of concepts and test and refine them so by the time you know quarter 1 we were into release phase where our templates are ready and we were able to use them consistently on the technologies of our choice without you know further problems because uh, it took some time to you know re- revise them because you will face many problems uh, as a part of your templates because uh, some of them are problem with the template some of them problem with the code itself so deciding on iterating them understanding the right place of the problem and uh, you know whether you want to change the template or whether you want to fix the code uh, all of it took you know about a quarter and now we're in the deployment phase which is quarter 2 you know about Uh, june uh, june july august of uh, 21 22 in this phase we will be training the developers so that we have a larger technology sorry engineering pool to address the issues and then you know use them consistently and improvise improvise on that and then implement all the pipelines what we have developed you know consistently and then improve the problem space and then we will continue monitor this and optimize it further but you know if you look at the whole thing it all, almost took about 3 quarters but it's perfect now so that's why it's important that you know you understand your problem magnitude and then give enough time to planning tracking and execution throughout uh, your tracking should help you give you early feedback and improvise and then uh, you know pick up pace in the later phases so if we look at our journey now this is where we have started with you know 350 odd repos half half of them have uh, some ci with inconsistent technologies inconsistent steps etc we looked at in, uh, understanding the problem space and why it's not working what are the problems picked up from there got into our you know deep dive phase then find you know the uh, root cause of it understanding the problems finalizing the technology iterating through multiple discussions and down the line you know where we are now we were able to complete building ci for all of our repositories which were built over a period of 5 years you know uh, accumulated standardized the technology standardized the steps uh, so that now it's in control for us we were able to achieve what we wanted to achieve so it's good to be here uh, after all of this you know few lessons what we have learned understanding from our problems and learning from our journey so if i just look at you know understand all the issues our journey the summary you know uh, i want to summarize in three important steps if not managed carefully technology will go out of hand due to the speed at which it is evolving so that's what we have observed over a period of 5 years and now uh, with the right strategy and shared vision we can easily solve even major problems so with the strategy of ensuring you know the principle set at the, at the beginning and then you know got the buy in from all the stakeholders including the developers and management and you know our customer and all we were able to solve biggest problem but overall if you look at it it is slow the transformation is slow always you need patience and focus 
you need a good plan and you know once you have all the base work done you will be able to you know come up with a good plan execute track and complete it and you know reach your objectives and shashank anything else you want to add yeah so uh, uh, i just want to have my parting notes as uh, the journey has been really exciting we started where we were in silos where to start with we we were, we had no no idea of will we be able to achieve it or not because if you look at at the past technology and the repo base we we had in this journey we were uh, we are certainly not very confident but then yes uh, we were sure that if we had the right vision we had a proper planning and a better execution we will definitely be able to achieve it over a period of time so that's what we have done we have achieved and then we are we are thriving to achieve more in in coming days so yeah this is all what i wanted to share with all of you thank you